What's up guys, quick morning video before the world's first race begins for Root of Nightmares. So, before we get into it, if you want to watch the raid race, get some emblems from Twitch Rivals and Drops, be sure to check out the stream, link in the description below, twitch.tv slash kkbeaver. Now that we're done with hashtag ad, I just wanted to talk about some builds that you could bring into the raid to help you out, some recommendations or suggestions, what have you, which mods to look out for, and things like that. So, let's get started. Let's go over mods first. These are going to apply basically to any character. For the most part, you could change some of them depending on a particular build, you know, like an ammo finder build, for example. But I'm just going to mention some that you should keep an eye out for to use in the raid. So let's get started. We have powerful friends. Collecting an orb causes your allies to have their armor charge increased by one. And radiant light, you can get up to two charges if you're a different subclass element of the person using this. Armor charges are basically your gateway to get more damage out for your surges in your boots, which I'll get to in a second. So you want to have something that gives you armor charges, obviously, and something that increases your maximum capacity of them. So for the helmet slot, these are good to run, especially like on a tether character that's going to be popping their super for their teammates all the time anyway. Then we have siphon mods. So for me personally, I'm going to be using Agar Scepter a lot, and Stasis Siphon will make it so that I get orbs of power on the ground, which again will help me build up my armor charges because that's the entire loop get orbs, pick up orbs, you then have armor charges for your siphons. Uh, sorry, for your surges. Well, your siphons do, but yeah, you get the point. So these are very uh, key as well, depending on what you're using. Make sure you have a siphon on, typically for your energy-type weapon. For your gloves, you want to look out for anything that can make an orb of power with your melee or your grenade, depending on which class you're using. For example, warlocks, you're obviously going to want to have firepower because you're going to throw 8 million fusion grenades and kill everything, and that'll start making orbs. For Hunters and Titans, you have several melee builds that you could use, so you would use something like Heavy Handed. Powered melee kills give you an orb of power, and that's a free gateway into, again, surges and armor charges. Then after that, you have cooldown things like Momentum Transfer, Bolstering Detonation, Focusing Strike. All of these make your cooldowns go lower depending on what kind of build you're going to use, melee, grenade build, etc. So these are definitely worth keeping out for. Also, quick mention to Shield Break Charge, just in case there's a lot of shields in the raid. This could be helpful as well, on top of the Artifact mod, which is Shattered Orbs. Every time you break a Combatant Shield for the first time, you make an Orb of Power. It's actually silly, particularly in the new Exotic mission as well, with the Arc Harpies on Legend. Chest mods. This isn't brand new information or anything, but you should definitely have Resist mods on, depending on which enemies you will be fighting. So if, you know, 80% of the enemies are shooting Arc, definitely put on Arc Resist on your chest piece. You could also run Harmonic Resistance or because of Dampener here as well depending on if your enemy will be like shooting splash damage at you, for example. In the fourth slot, I recommend running Charged Up, because it increases your maximum capacity for armor charge stacks, so you can stack more and thus increase your damage phase and your output in your surges, which are going to be in the boots, which we're going to go to right now. So your boots are where you will build your damage. All the surge mods are here. We have all the kinetic, arc, solar, void, etc. You get the point. And here is where you would build damage. Typically, I would recommend running three of some sort of kind, depending on your damage phase. You know, if you're using a solar loadout, then you would run three solar surges, and you can get them down to three points, actually, thanks to the artifacts. So if you're running, like, Cataclysmic, Galahorn, etc., it's really good for this. But me, in my case, I'll be using Agar Scepter again, so I could use uh, Stasis Surge with that and just have two of them on while having Recov on. But I could also take off Recov and put a third surge on, to increase the output. This goes from 10 to 15% to 22% in case you were wondering for the percentage differences. Finally, in the class item slot, the two main things I would say to worry about are time dilation for damage phases to go with your surges to increase the uh, decaying timer for your armor charge, and then Reaper. Reaper got disabled but recently re-enabled in time for the raid. This mod in particular on Hunters is absolutely bonkers but you can use it on any class. After you use your class ability, you just kill something with your weapon and you make an orb of power. It's that simple, and with hunters having dodges out the wazoo, you will be making tons of orbs very, very easily. Definitely consider running this mod. Aside from that, Empowered Finish got disabled, so don't even think about that. You could be running things like Balmer, Outreach, and Distribution for ability cooldowns, though, so I'd recommend that. Let's go over classes now. First up, for hunters, I recommend top priority you go in with a Night Stalker build. Just because this is the best class in the game for survivability, going into something blind and under contest, you can manage your invisibility very well with this. 
having a smoke grenade slash shatter dive to go invis and then two dodges if you're running six coyote which i will be like this right here to have two dodges on you and then if you chain it correctly you would just be going smoke dodge smoke dodge smoke and your invis basically never ends until you get you know caught in like a little corner otherwise you'll be gone free away from any enemy damage on top of that, you might run into a hard damage check on bosses and running Tether for a 30% damage debuff as opposed to like Divinity where it's 15 is, you know, a big difference and it might make the difference in your team beating a raid boss tomorrow. So Tether is already a solid plus on that alone. Now, while I don't recommend picking Strand over Night Stalker, I will make note of it that you could run this and potentially use Suspension to counteract things like Tormentors in the raid. Also, apparently somehow... This got nerfed in the patch today, but also buffed at the same time where it doesn't do ridiculous double damage as a glitch, but it does more damage overall. So now the super is actually even better somehow by the use of Star Eaters. So Threadrunner is a solid option to have if you for some reason don't want to play Night Slocker. This is definitely the way to go. And in case you're curious on what fragments to use, personally, I have Transmutation, Ascent, Warding, and Generation. Titans, I feel like you guys are in the same boat as Hunters. Berserker is actually very, very good for a Shrand subclass, despite people thinking that it was going to be complete Garbo. However, I think that you going in with Berserker instead of something like unkillable bonk hammers is probably a negative in the end. Yes, suspension is great and spamming abilities. Maybe suspension against Tormentors will be cool. However, I think Sunbreaker for most of the raid will probably give you more utility as you are quite literally unkillable as long as you don't throw your way your hammer into the sun. And you can use Syntheseps right here on the exotic to build up 3x melee damage, essentially two-shotting anything in the raid that's not a yellow bar boss or a yellow bar tormentor, as it has been for the last six to nine months in, you know, GMs which are negative 25 and higher than contest. But if you do want to go into the raid with Strand, I do have a build set up using fragments of Threat of Mind, Threat of Continuity, Generation, and Fury as the fragments down here. Final mention I want to make is, of course, Thunder Crash. Now, T Crash, as a standalone for like wave based content or an encounter where there's going to be a lot of objectives and not boss killing, this is not going to be very good. However, if you were going in a damage phase for a boss and you're missing out on damage for a damage check, for example, War Priest from King's Fall on the day one for contest mode, T Crash could come in handy to push you that much bit over the edge to get the boss kill. And it's worth noting. You should probably put this into your loadout slots just in case where Bonk Hammer wouldn't help you, T-Crash would. And of course, just to be clear, I mean T-Crash, of course, pairing with Curious of Falling Star for maximized damage and not something like Hoyle. Just wanted to point that out to be sure. Finally, we have Warlocks. Let's just get the easy gimme out of the way. Starfire Protocol, Well of Radiance. Do I need to say any more? This is disgusting. It's insane. I don't think I need to go on any further, but for the sake of just regurgitating the info from earlier, you definitely want to have firepower on for getting orbs off grenade kills, and then have ashes to assets on your helmet, because ashes to assets are genuinely insane. If you don't believe me, go watch my recent Twitter clip of using Well of Radiance and standing still and getting 47 million supers in the new Avalon mission on Legendary. Also, quick note to have Bomber on your class item for help as well on that with your class item and grenade synergy. Now your backup to this is going to be actually Strand because well, Ark sucks. And while I think Controverse Warlocks with Noah Bomb are very, very good, we don't know the encounters and the layouts of the raid yet. So it's hard to say where Controverse could fit in pretty well. However, Broodweaver is kind of, well, stupid with Osteo Shriga right now and Necrotic Grips. So it'd be basically a crime for me to not at least mention it going into the raid. So in case you're curious, the build for this would be a Shackle Grenade to eat your grenade, similar to Devour. And then for Fragments, you would have Generation, Warding, Fury, and Mind. And then, as I mentioned, Osteo Shriga would be in this build, basically just firing Toxic Projectiles and then killing stuff, then suspending everything around that thing that you killed. It's really, really silly. And then, of course, as I mentioned, Necrotic Grips, Damaging Combatants, Poisons them, dealing increased damage over time, defeating a Poison Combatant, spreads the condition, and as I'm... Like, I keep repeating myself, but it's just really, really, really stupid. And can you believe people were actually saying that Strand Warlock sucks? It's absurd. Also, quick mention that Needlestorm is actually a pretty decent super damage-wise, and it does help that there is a fragment to increase 
the Threadling damage. Just wanted to know that, and then moving on. Finally, I'm going to briefly talk about weapons. I can't really recommend one single specific weapon for each slot because, again, we don't know what the encounters are, what enemies they're going to be, how many bosses they're going to be. So I'm shooting in a dark here, but I'm just going to give you the best recommendations to my ability without knowing what's going to happen. Starting in the kinetic slot, Agger Scepter, still one of the most underrated weapons in the game. Somehow it's mind-blowing how people have not caught on to this yet, but incredible crowd control, super good in encounters where you'll be doing OBJs and just killing waves of enemies without bosses. Then we have things like Wither Horde for free tick damage, also insane on, of course, Warlock Starfire builds. We have Riptide with Choclip to slow down slash stun champions if we happen to run in them. Also, Choclip, I imagine, will freeze a Tormentor as well. Arbalist, break shields, break barrier knight champ shields as well if they're in there. Who knows? Still a solid weapon. Izanagi's Burden, of course, everybody knows. X4 Honed Edge, shoot spam, switch the rocket, shoot rocket, switch back. Pretty known for that as well. Then we're moving on to energies. First one out the gate, of course, is Forbearance, the silliest waveframe launcher ever released in this game. If you have this, absolutely get ready to use it because it's going to be great. Then for this season, since we have an artifact mod in Volatile Flow, where you pick up an orb, which will happen all the time, your void weapons become volatile, and you can run this without actually being on void. So, for example, you could be a solar warlock and still use it. I recommend using some void weapons in your loadout, such as Unforgiven, a void SMG, also has Repulsor Brace and Demo. Really, really nice. You could also use Harsh Language if you were lucky enough to get this to drop. Another waveframe launcher that can roll Repulsor Brace, among other things. Also very, very good. And other than that, it just comes down to certain utility. You know, you have a scout rifle for maybe unstops, bow for maybe overloads, etc. Things like that. Also, quick mention to Hollow Denial, another void weapon that you can run with Repulsor Brace and Left from Gold and is very, very good. Now, for heavy weapons, it's all going to come down to how an encounter is laid out, right? There's no specific answer to the number one best thing right now, but I'm just going to name off some things that if you have, you should just bring it to the raid. Number one is Bump in the Night. Depending on which character you're using, you could run Frenzy Auto Loading or Frenzy Field Prep, or if you're on a Warlock, you could run a Demo Choclip. Solid choice either way. You've got Anarchy for free tick damage, as well as GLs getting buffed heading into Lightfall. Also a great choice to take. You have Leviathan's Breath, which also got buffed heading into Lightfall and does hit like a truck. And perhaps Staggering could come into play for this raid, depending on the enemies that we get. But either way, like I said, hits like a truck. Also strong against Unstopped Champs, a solid choice to bring with you. Tractor Cannon could be a sleeper pick for a number of reasons. First up, obviously, it gives you a 30% debuff on your enemy. On top of this, it can also suppress and temporarily blind Tormentors, which gives you the opportunity to kill them without them smashing you and suppressing you and your abilities. So Tractor is kind of a, a little sleeper pick, I think, right now for a heavy slot, depending on the encounter. Next up is an obvious choice, Galahorn. I don't think I need to go into much detail for this, but Solid Rockets buffs other rockets around you that are the legendary variety, you know, your hotheads, your bumps, etc. So it's just a solid choice overall, and obviously it's a good rocket in its own right. Speaking of which, Hothead has a ton of great perks, Field Prep, Tracking, Clown, Explosive Light, Demo, etc, etc. Solid Rocket to bring into the raid if you have one already. Then we have the King of Linears, despite Linears getting hit this season. This gun is still very, very good, and by far and away the best linear in the game now with the recent Vice nerfs. So if you have a Cataclysmic, definitely have Bait and Switch and Four Times the Charm. Bring into the raid, it might help you quite a bit. Finally, I want to end this with mentioning Machine Guns, Fixed Odds, Commemoration. Both of these should not be slept on. They are very solid in their own right between Incandescent and Volatile Rounds, and can come in extremely handy depending on the encounters and how much enemy density there will be. So if you have these crafted, which I would absolutely recommend that you do get crafted at some point, even if not for this raid, have these on you just in case you never know. And there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed, or hopefully this helps you in the raid. Good luck on getting your emblem or whether you're racing to try to get in the, you know, first top 10, top 50, whatever it may be. And uh, let me know what you think. Again, hopefully you enjoy. Like, subscribe, this up the channel. Uh, good luck on the race. And once again, catch us on stream. Racing for first, twitch.tv slash Beaver. Link in the description below. And th that Dado guy is also streaming, I imagine, too. But, you know, th that's th a separate story. Catch you all on stream soon. All right, bye.